So this is the HP Elite Dragonfly Max. Not the regular Dragonfly that I reviewed last year, but the Max version. The Max version comes with a few extra features, which I'll talk about soon. But most importantly, for those of you out there that want it, you can now get it with 5G. Just note that if you want 5G in this thing, it's gonna cost you an extra $440. Now I said this was the most beautiful laptop or business laptop in 2020. And I still think it's one of the most beautiful laptops today, but they stuck with the same design. You're still getting that tiny 2.49 pound package with a CNC magnesium aluminum body. And they're even using ocean plastics in the speaker grills to help save the environment. On the left-hand side, you have your USB port, your power button, and a SIM tray. On the right hand side, you have a full size HDMI, audio port, and two Thunderbolt ports. This is a two in one device, meaning you can flip the screen 180 degrees and use it as a tablet. This is a touch display, so even if you don't buy the pen, you can still manipulate the display using your fingers. The unfortunate part, even at this price point, is they don't include the pen in the box. It's an extra feature you have to buy if you wanna draw on the screen. Now this display is still 16 by nine. This would've been a great opportunity to go to 16 by 10, especially on a display of the size, it would've made it feel like a 14 inch display with that slightly more vertical space. There is one cool thing though, there's HP's SureView, and this is a privacy feature. I'm staring at this screen right now in a diagonal position, and the screen looks very dark. If I turn on SureView, it becomes even darker. Like, it makes it very hard to see what's on the screen. And if you wanna see what's on the screen, you have to stare directly in the center of it. This is great if you're an executive and you're on a plane, which hopefully one day we'll be doing again. You can sit in your seat, and the person beside you is not gonna be able to snoop on you. Now, this display being 1920 by 1080 is the only option. You can't get it in QHD or 4K, and that's fine considering its size, but it's an okay display. Like the color gamut's good, but the brightness is a little on the low side. It's like 330 nits, which is like the average for most displays. Quick interruption, I accidentally left auto brightness on when I did my brightness test, and that's why I only got 330 nits of brightness. I redid the test with auto brightness off, and oh my God, 811 nits of brightness. That's insane. I don't think I can remember a laptop that I've tested in the last three years that can get this bright. Not exactly 1000, but man, 811. All right, back to the video. Now, one of the new features to the Max lineup is the webcam. This is a five megapixel webcam, and right now I'm recording my mug in QHD quality. So you're gonna get much better video quality with this than you would with like your typical entry level laptop. The microphones are also supposed to be better. There's four of them, two that are world facing, so omnidirectional, and then two that are inbound. These will do a better job of picking up your voice. You guys let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the actual mic quality. Now back in the day, HP used to have some of the worst keyboards I've ever used, but lately their keyboard game is on another level. Like this tiny little laptop with only 1.3 millimeters of travel distance has one of the best keyboards I've ever typed on. It is so tactile, it has such a satisfying click when you're using it. There's obviously backlighting so you can see the keys in the dark, but overall it's a great keyboard. I also love the little extra features they include. Like you have this three application boot sequence so you can pair it to your favorite three apps and you press this button and it just loads them up. And the other thing is the ability to sanitize your keyboard without accidentally opening things up or, or deleting something while you're cleaning them. They have this little application that runs that locks the keyboard so you can sanitize the keys to keep them nice and fresh. I wish every laptop had this. The touchpad is not massive, but it's very accurate and very easy to use. Fingerprint scanner on the right bottom hand side, and then of course you have Windows Hello to log you in using your face. Speaker quality is actually quite good. You have two speakers on the bottom, which are your subwoofers, and you have two speakers on top. Now in terms of performance, this is using an 11th gen Intel i7-118 5G7 CPU. It's a four core processor. It's paired with the Iris Xe integrated GPU, which is pretty good. 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD for a very big price tag. Now, if you compare this to the eighth gen version of this laptop, it looks like a nice upgrade. But as soon as you compare it to other 11th gen Intel processors, it's on the bottom of the list 
in terms of performance. It doesn't matter if you're compiling code, it's just not the laptop meant for that. Even if you're using Adobe Photoshop, like it's gonna edit photos fine, but if you're some sort of maniac thinking about buying this to like do batch processing, there's better laptops out there for that. The reason being is because HP has nerfed the performance in order to have better fan noise. Like this thing will never go over 40 decibels no matter how hard you're pushing it. They want the person using this laptop to have a very quiet experience. And as you can see here, there's only one fan and two heat pipes. Two fans for this style of laptop would have been preferred, but I don't think engineering wise, they could have done this. Like this thing, is jam packed. They just don't have the extra space for another fan. And if they put another fan in there, then the laptop would be louder. Now, not much is upgradable. Like you can swap out the Wi Fi card. And then, of course, you have an NVMe SSD right here, which you can swap out for something bigger down the road. But the one in here gets really good read and write speeds. The one thing that got a nerf on this laptop is the battery life. It's still 56 watt hours, but I'm not getting the crazy battery life I got on the previous model. This one only gets eight hours and 45 minutes. That's still good, but it's nowhere near the other one. So here's the thing. The HP Elite Dragonfly Max is still one of the most beautiful business laptops I've ever reviewed. It's light. It's portable, it has tons of value, one of the best keyboards I've typed on, very good speakers, and pretty good battery life. But it's super duper expensive. And if you're a regular, everyday consumer, don't waste your money on this because you're gonna find better bang for your buck by purchasing other laptops. This laptop is really meant for a corporation, someone who has like a contract with HP and they're replacing their desktops and they've gotta upgrade management's computers and they're all requesting to have something light and portable. If that's you who's watching this video, then you're gonna love this thing, you know? It's not perfect, like I would have loved the 16 by 10 display and of course a pen included, but if you're gonna buy this for your management team, don't waste your money on the i7 1185G7 CPU. Get the lower SKU, the 116, because you're just not gonna see the performance benefits of spending more. In fact, I really wish they had an i5 version of this, at least with the max lineup, because buying an i7 in this doesn't really provide much value. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, because if you did, feel free to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.